and it fell to the ground. Where is that church at today? Where is that spirit at today? That's what God wants us to find out. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 14. I don't know which way God's going with this, but he's got a plan, and I just want to follow him. Beginning at verse 7, he starts talking about a parable. Uh, John four, uh, Luke 14, 7. He said, and he put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he had marked how they chose out the chief rooms, saying unto them. Now, Jesus... If you start earlier, you'll find out he's been invited uh, to a, a meal or he's been invited to a meeting. And he's at the Pharisee's house. He's been invited over to the preacher's house. John chapter 14. Or he's been invited to a, a wise man's house. I don't know how you'd want to word that. But... There was a man in the congregation that or in the midst of them that was sick with the dropsy. Jesus asked the Pharisees, Luke chapter 14, verse 6, I think where I'm at, uh, 3, 4, 5, anywhere along there. You just have to read the whole chapter. But Jesus asked him, is it lawful to heal a man on the Sabbath? All of them kept their mouths shut. But while they were sitting there, Jesus started looking around. He wanted to see where they was all sitting. He paid attention. Who's sitting in the back row? Who's sitting in the front rows? He started looking at who was sitting throughout the building. None of them said a word, so Jesus healed the man. Then he said, if any one of you have an ass that falls in the ditch... Won't you get him out on the Sabbath? Showing that Jesus said, I am Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath is not Lord of me, is basically what he was saying. But the Bible says that he was paying attention to where everyone was seated. And when we understand that, we'll understand what he's doing. He said, it says, and he put forth a parable to those that were bidden when he marked how they chose out their chief rooms. Saying unto them, that was verse 7, When thou art bidden, when you are invited by any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than you or than thou be invited of him or be bidden of him. And he that invited you or bid you, bade you, and him come and say unto you, come and say unto thee, give this man place, and thou began with shame to take the lowest seat. He said, when you're invited to a wedding, don't go in and sit in the highest seat. Don't go up there and sit beside the bridegroom and the bride at the big table. He said, but when you're invited, Go sit in the lowest seat. Go sit on the outside. Unless the, the groom has invited someone else that he wants to sit beside him or in the highest seat. And he comes to you and say, would you please move and go back over there because this seat's reserved for so-and-so. Jesus is teaching humility. He said, because you're going to be ashamed if you have to get up out of your seat and go to another seat. You may say, well, what's that got to do with us here in church today? God wants us to humble ourselves and not to lift ourselves up. Because if we go to lifting ourselves up, we're going to be brought down. It's better for someone else to lift you up. It's better for someone else to honor you than for you to honor yourself. And it says uh, to the lowest room, but when thou art bidden, go and sit down at the lowest room. And when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. 
When you're coming to a wedding or when you come to a feast, instead of taking the high seat, go and take a low seat. Hide in the back somewhere. And then the one that invited you to that feast or invited you to the wedding can come to you and say, hold it. Don't be sitting back here, but come up here and sit with us. And this is the way that God wants us to be. And and I'm going to tie this or he'll tie it all in again. For whosoever exalteth himself. Well, let me go. Friend, go up higher. Then shall they have worship. Then shall thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased. And he that humble himself shall be exalted. And, you know, this next verse here that I'm going to talk to, then he said, I'll, I'll tell you about it in a minute. Then said he also to him that bade him, when thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again and recompense be made thee. He said, listen, he talked to the man who had invited him to this 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 meeting, this feast. He's, he was trying to tell each one of us a lesson. And, and this lesson is not only for me, but it's for everybody in here. When you have a big dinner, when you have your Thanksgiving dinner, when you have your great big feast or your Christmas dinner or whatever, don't invite your neighbors and your friends only. Don't invite the rich people that can invite you back over to have a meal at their house. He said, don't invite the ones that you know are going to invite you back to have a party. And this is for a lot of the rich around this particular community. When all of you have your little get-togethers and your parties, you only invite the ones that you know can give a party next month and invite you. It's a social club. But Jesus says, don't do that. He said, if you're going to throw a party, don't invite the ones that can invite you over to their house to where you can be paid back. But he said, go and invite the poor. The ones you know can never throw a party. Go invite the people that are poor. Those that are halt and maimed. Those that are blind. He said, go invite them to your dinner table. Not expecting anything in return. But you see, we're living in a, a lifetime period right now. We're living in a, an age or an era where everybody wants something in return for everything they do. Nobody's willing to go do something for someone without getting paid for it. And I have found as being pastor of a church for 20-some years, I have found that the poorest of poor will do twice as much as the richest of rich. The poorest of poor don't mind doing anything. The poorest of poor will lend you a hand when you have need. The poorest of poor will show up when something has to be done. The poorest of poor will always be there to help. And God's telling us in the Word, Jesus is telling us in the Word, when you get ready to have a feast, invite those that can't have a feast to pay you back. Invite those to come, praise God, that nobody else will invite. Associate yourself with those that are humble. And church, this is where we've got to get to today. We've got to get so filled up with the Holy Ghost that we're not looking at self and we're not looking at what we can gather. We're not looking, hallelujah, that what we can put together. But praise God, we're looking at what Christ told us to look at. We've got something inside of us that's telling us, you go down the straight and the narrow way. You don't go the way of the rich. You don't go the way of the wealthy. The Bible says, woe unto you that are rich. He says, it's going to be a whole lot easier for a camel to enter in the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. And some of the disciples said, well, Lord, that's impossible. He said it might be with men, but with God all things are possible. And he, let me tell you something about the eye of a needle. A lot of people don't understand it. But the gate of the city has a large door for the camels to go through. And inside that door is another little door for the people to go through. A camel has to go kneel down and has to squeeze through that little door, which is called the eye of a needle. You got the large door that the camel can just walk through. But the eye of the needle is the little door. The little door that people pass through. So that they don't have to open up the big door. And he says it's more, it'll be easier for that camel. 
which is a very difficult thing to get a camel down on his knees and get him to walk on his knees. Especially, David was talking about this the other day. She said, especially with that hump on his back. Somebody was. But church, the thing is, God wants us to humble ourselves before him. And it goes on, it says, uh, Call not thy friends, thy brother, thy rich. Verse 13. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind. The ones that nobody else will have anything to do with. Call the ones in the community that actually need a good meal. Knowing that they can't cook a big meal and invite you back. You see, we're always thinking or, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to 